presentation of research proposal. Eh, sorry, not your research proposal. The research progress. Okay, your research progress. All right, so I think we can start now because of all, all of you are here. So we start from okay, Sumit, John, Joanna, Rajiv, and followed by the BCS, Ruchika, Shrestha, and Siva Ranjini. Okay, so let's start with. Okay, uh, before that, all right. So after I play all of your videos, so after that we will have short uh, Q and A question and answer. I think it's just around one or two question. Okay, just to make sure that you are doing your work. Okay, thank you very much. So we start with Sumik first. Good afternoon to our FIP coordinator and my fellow uh, classmates. My name is Shomik Bhattacharji and today I will be presenting on my progress for FIP2. Uh, my title for the, prog uh, for the FIP is Multi-Channel QCM for Odor Characterization of Volatile Organic Compounds. So for today's agenda, I will, be, um, I will be giving a brief introduction on my topic and my objective for the project. Uh, next on, I will be uh, uh, explaining about the preliminary study that I'm doing right now to understand my project. Uh, after that, I'll be showing some of the case studies that I've performed while doing the study. And uh, lastly, I'll explain the future work that I'm, I, I have planned out to do uh, for executing my project. So first off, uh, VOCs or volatile organic compounds. Uh, these are mainly uh, groups of hydrocarbon chains and uh, containing benzene, toluene, and formaldehyde, some of which are considered carcinogenic. And these have uh, impacts on uh, health issues and environmental hazards. So uh, it is uh, very important for to curb the uh, amount of VOCs which is uh, expelled into the air. My project aims to design uh, three kinds of uh, multi-channel QCM sensors and uh, each of these sensors will have different number of channels. The first one will have uh, two channels, a second one with three channels and the third one with four channels. Um, this is to compare uh, the sensitivity of each device and find out which one is the optimal one for uh, detecting VOCs uh, in a complex environment. The uh, the image on the right shows a general idea of the construction of MQCM uh, from the top view on this side. View. So for my study, which I am conducting right now, uh, I have, I'm using Comsol Multiphysics uh, software to simulate uh, my design. And uh, there are different kinds of parameters which uh, are needed to be uh, varied in order to understand uh, uh, which is the optimal uh, parametric uh, values. So the parameters consider, uh, concerned for my project are the gold radius, uh, the quartz thickness, electro thickness, quartz radius, the shear modulus, and the density of the quartz. Uh, for my study, for, my, uh, for now, I'm keeping the shear modulus and the density of quartz as constant, uh, since I, I want to regulate my study in a, in a consistent manner. And uh, the entire study is based on the Sarbury's uh, theorem which, uh, which defines the relationship between the resonant frequency and the quartz thickness. So the equation is given uh, by this. Now we have to understand uh, the relationship between the resonant frequency and the quartz thickness and how the behavior changes when we change one of the either values. So here I've uh, drawn out an Excel sheet in which it shows uh, with change in quartz thickness, uh, the resonant frequency also changes. So here you can see highlighted as uh, yellow. So the quartz thickness as we increase it from 500 to 334 to 168, uh, as we decrease the quartz thickness, the resonant frequency uh, increases. So it's an inverse relation. Um, right here, 500 uh, micrometers of the quartz thickness gives a resonant frequency of 3.3. 334 gives uh, five megahertz and 168 gives 10 megahertz approximately. So uh, we're choosing 168 micrometers for our study because uh, it obtains the highest uh, resonant frequency and highest resonant frequency implies that we will uh, get a more sensitive value out of our simulation. So the first case study that I've performed uh, is uh, the same thing, uh, which is the varied uh, resonant frequency. 
So here I've simulated three uh, different quartz thickness and obtained um, the graph for the resonant frequency against it. And here you can see with the three uh, colors distinctly uh, showing the behavior of the resonant frequency against the quartz thickness. Next up, I have done uh, a study for the varied electro thickness. So the electro thickness, which is defined by GT over here, uh, uh, we have to find out the optimal uh, value for um, for the best displacement. So here uh, I have kept a range from 100 to 500 nanometers uh, because generally that's uh, the range for a QCM. And over here, the plot shows that the light blue color, which is 400 nanometers, shows the highest displacement. Uh, the highest displacement implies that we can obtain a more sensitive value for our simulation. The next one uh, is for the electro thickness. So as I just explained, uh, that 400 nanometers of uh, the electro thickness gives the best displacement. So I simulated it uh, separately and obtained the graph for that. Uh, over here, there's a lot of noise because, um, because the graph is of 201 points. Uh, so uh, we are not obtaining a very clean graph, uh, but however, we can see that on 10 uh, megahertz of frequency, it obtains a better displacement than uh, in other points. So next up is for the uh, gold radius. Uh, gold radius, normally the range would be from 1000 micrometers to 2000 micrometers. So here we're taking two values, which is 1000 and 2000. And I have plotted a graph for that. Um, here also from above 10 uh, megahertz, uh, it's showing some displacement. And uh, the blue color, which is the 1000 micrometers of gold radius, uh, is showing the most uh, uh, displacement against the uh, frequency. So uh, until now, I've done these kind of uh, case studies. And uh, my future work is to introduce the sensing material in order to understand uh, which sensing material is most sensitive towards my gas analytes. So, uh, this is uh, the probably uh, how it how it would look like. Um, this one, this example is for a Cheeto Sun uh, sensing material. So the blue color over here on top of the quartz crystal, uh, it shows the sensing uh, layer of Cheeto Sun, and uh, the software provides all the parameters uh, for the material that is used. So for Cheeto Sun, uh, the software provides the Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, density, and relative permittivity. So uh, like that, I can choose uh, other kind of materials and simulate it and find out which one is the best for my project. Um, so uh, that's my progress until now for my FIP and uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Sumi. All right, Sumi, I have a question to ask. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Can you show me what is your previous objective for this uh, FIP? I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I've joined on my phone. Uh, it's uh, laptop is working right now. But uh, my previous objective for FIP one was uh, to design. Uh, uh, design with the optimal uh, parameters, uh, the NQCM, and uh, uh, to develop uh, in, in order to detect uh, PC. So that was my main objective. Where, where, where are you right now? So I'm at home. Sorry? Someone home? So I'm at Okay. Uh, so uh, I can't, can can you share your screen, please? Is it possible? On my phone. Uh, so sir, that's the problem. I can't use my laptop right now. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Never mind. Uh, please share your what's uh, sorry. You please share your objective and send to me later. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sir. All right. So now we move on to the next presentation.
Okay, John, are you ready, John? Yes, sir. Good day to everyone present in this meeting. My name is John Rakshis, and today I'm going to be presenting the progress made on my paper called Automated Streetlight Control System Based on a Microcontroller. So the contents or the topics I'll be covering in this presentation today are introduction, objectives, hardware requirements, software requirements, the new tools and concepts that I've adopted to make my system better, the overall plan for my FYP, and also the expected outcomes. So to give you an introduction about my paper, it was to create an integrated streetlight system that could control its um, brightness based on the ambient light present outside. And also it would only turn to full brightness when a car was detected on the road. And once the car passes the road, the lights would go back to being dim, which would save a lot of electricity. And during the daylight, it, it would remain off. So it's automated in that way. And also if there's cloudy conditions or rainy conditions, the light will turn on because we have an LDR detecting the amount of ambient light present. So the objectives of this um, project is to identify the requirements and techniques to develop an automate, automatic street light, control, uh, street light system controlled by a microcontroller. Uh, to design and develop a system that can show a reduction in power consumption upon implementation. So we're trying to make the system more efficient. And also we are trying to perform testing to ensure that the system can light up the path for the car correctly without any lag or delay as safety is the first priority. So let's take a look at the hardware requirements. So to complete this project, I would require an IR transmitter receiver, an LDR sensor, a light detecting resistor, a crystal oscillator, a couple of resistors, capacitors, transistors, uh, cables and connectors to connect all the components together, diodes, uh, PCB, it's, it will be the base plate of my entire system, LEDs to imitate or um, simulate the street lights, the transformer as a power supply, and also there's an adapter connected to the transformer, some push buttons, switches, an 8051 microcontroller, and some IC sockets. So the software requirements um, is basically essentially only to code the microcontroller to perform the functions that we wanted to perform. So I'll be using the KL Mu Vision as the IDE or the development tool and um, using C as the programming language. So let's discuss a bit about the new concepts and tools that I've adopted since my last research. So first and foremost, the Kyle uh, Mu Vision IDE. So the reason I chose this is because first and foremost, it's an IDE with project management, runtime environments, build facilities, and also I can make my source code on it and debug it. And the benefit of this is that it's optimized for C and C++ uh, coding language. It's easy to use and it has a live syntax checking and it also has code highlighting to show me where the errors and misplaces are. And also I will be using the version C51, which is specifically tailor-made to code for the 8081 microcontrollers. So the PCB assembly techniques, this is a very key portion of my system because as I said, it serves as the backbone of my entire system. So I would have to, you know, essentially put all of the components onto this PCB. So the first uh, challenge would be to find the correct PCB. So I'm looking for something that's uh, 30 centimeters long and 20 centimeters wide, which will be able to fit my simulation project on it. And also finding the correct type of uh, PCB. For now, I believe it's the single-sided PCB that I'll be using. And also to find the correct sockets for components like the microcontroller and all of them. We'll need a specific 40-pin socket to go in place. And also, I have to solder all these components into place. So the IC selection. So this is basically uh, the 8051 microcontroller. It's got 40 pins in them. It's an 8-bit microcontroller with 4 KB of on-RAM, uh, on-chip ROM or read-only memory. It's based on the CISC architecture, a complex instruction set architecture, and it has serial communication and some features like timers, interrupts, and I use C or C++ to code. And it's also a beginner or easy to use uh, microcontroller. So this picture on the right shows you all of the different uh, components that are present inside this microcontroller. Okay, so now uh, talking about my overall plan for my FYP. So first and foremost, by the end of this week, most likely, I'll 
purchase all the components that is required, which I mentioned in the hardware components section. So I'll purchase all of them. Then once they arrive, I'll have to fabricate the PCB as uh, most of the PCBs these days need to be etched or I'll try to find something with pre-existing holes for me to connect them easily. So if this um, PCB fabrication connection is successful, then if the process is successful, and then I can move on to system integration. But if for some reason I mess up the PCB or it breaks or it's not connecting or it's not um, made properly, then I have to go back and refabricate it. So then I would move on to this loop again. So the system integration is basically putting all the other components that I mentioned onto the PCB as one uh, unit function as the prototype. So once I integrate all of them, I will get a prototype device. So this prototype device I will have to test. So upon testing, I will know whether the, the system is working correctly, you know, visual inspection, and just looking if it functions the way I want it to. If yes, then I can move on to the presentation. But if for some reason some function is not working, if I need to rework something or anything of that sort, then I will have to reintegrate the system and see where I went wrong. And it will come back in a loop again. So once it's successful, I will move on to my FYP presentation. And once the FYP presentation is done, my FYP will be complete. So this is a rough estimate of all the components that I need. So yeah, so these are all the components that I need. So all of the components I mentioned, the quantity, and also its price in Malaysian ringgit. And the expected outcomes. So I'm doing this project to first and foremost reduce the electricity consumption um, consumed by these uh, street lights as they have to be on for the whole night, which would drag a lot of electricity. So if we can make this process more efficient, we can save a lot of electricity, which can be used for other purposes. And also to improve the lifetime of the light bulb. So as you know, light bulbs need to be constantly replaced when they are turned on for really long periods of time. So by switching this um, and using LEDs, it really improves the lifetime of the light bulb. And also to eliminate the path of the vehicle safely, because as, as we can do anything, but the system that existed needs to perform its function as normal. So the system would still have to eliminate the path of the vehicle safely, but we're adding a, a comp component of efficiency to it. And also this, I believe, will play a role in reducing our uh, carbon footprint as uh, humans and for the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, John. Right, John, uh, can you go back to your thesis objective? Uh, you want me to present the slides? Uh, yes, show me your slide. Okay. It's not allowing me to show my slide. I don't know why. Okay, can you try now? Still the same. But the objectives are the same from FYP1. I haven't changed. Oh, you cannot share the screen? Yes, sir. 
just doing nothing when I try to share screen. Can you try one more time? Okay. Okay, that's the meter. All right. Still okay. Okay, no problem. Uh, I can open your slide here from here. Okay. Okay, this is your objective, right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay, so my question is, you want to identify the requirements. You want to identify the requirement and techniques to develop an automatic street light system controlled by a microcontroller. All right, so for my opinion, okay, I think you no need to put the, to identify the requirement and techniques. You need to remove all these sentences, okay, just put to develop an automatic street light system controlled by a microcontroller. Okay, but during your justification, you need to say that you need to identify the requirement, the method, everything, right? So, to make it clear your objective, just say to develop an automatic street light system controlled by a microcontroller. That's all. Okay? Okay, sir. All right, in this world, you are designing or you want to create a modeling? Yeah. Modeling, modeling, okay, design, okay, for your information, if you say design, design means that you are trying to make a system starting from zero, from scratch. Okay, that's mean you need to discuss, okay, the theoretical part, you need to do some simulation part, you need to do some of the evaluation, evaluation regarding to the, what, to the, to your hardware before you jump to the modeling. Okay, so if you want to story or if you want to discuss for the design in your FIP, you should have the theoretical part. Okay, theoretical part including the simulation and everything. If you want to model, okay, you want to model a hardware, you should put to model a system, okay, that can show a reduction of power consumption upon implementation. All right. Okay, sir. So please select you want to design or you want to model, okay? And please please remove to design and develop because uh, in objective you are required only select one, one what one uh, one sentence, okay? Such as uh, to design and or to develop or to model, okay? There is no two words such as to design and develop this is not right okay okay <clears throat> all right so next finally to perform testing okay to ensure that the system can light up the path for the car correctly without any lag or delay so maybe you can say that to perform testing to ensure uh i think this is not the the nice objective okay you should put uh, to verify okay to verify the system that can light up the path for the car correctly without any lag or delay. Okay? Okay. So this means all of these objectives, you need to revise again and make sure you should achieve this target. If, for example, you are not uh, achieve this target or this objective, you need to do the justification okay, during the final uh, presentation of this FYP. Alright, so you should show some of the result or should show some of the reason why you are not achieved this objective because I will write this objective in my records and during the final year, uh, sorry, during the final presentation. So I will ask you again one more time. Okay. Okay. So, sir. Right. So that's all. Thank you, uh, Mr. John. So now we move on to the next presentation. So Joanna. So Joanna, are you ready? Yes, sir. My name is Joanna and I will be presenting my FYP2 progress review on my FYP project, the real-time traffic light control system 
based on image processing and object detection. So in this presentation, we'll cover the introduction where I introduce my problem statement and the scope of my project, the methodology plan where I will discuss my plan for the implementation of this project, the implementation plan where I will discuss the implementation in terms of timelines and schedules, and the expected outcome of the system. So we'll begin with the introduction. The premise of my project, for those of you who don't remember or who weren't there when I presented it last time, is how to combat traffic congestion. So the major cause of traffic congestion is because traffic lights are inefficient. They cannot discriminate from the lanes which are congested and the lanes which are empty and not congested. So what this causes is time and fuel wastage on the driver's part. And additionally, for patients in ambulances, they would be unable to reach the hospital in time in terms of in emergency situations, which is a pretty dire situation. So the problem statement is in a conventional traffic light control system, it uses pre-programmed time slots and it has no support for emergency vehicles. But in my smart traffic light control system, it aims to combat this. So what it does is it manipulates the traffic camera input and based on the real-time road conditions, it will maximize the efficiency of the traffic lights and redirect traffic accordingly. And additionally, it also has ambulance or emergency vehicle detection. So in that case, it would prioritize the lanes with the emergency vehicles on it and turn the light green. So that's the basic idea of what my system is and what's meant to do. So the objectives of my FYP2 are to identify the requirements and techniques required to develop a smart traffic light system, to design and develop an object detection system to identify the number of vehicles on each lane and the presence of an ambulance from an image input, to design and develop a traffic light control system, to control the traffic lights, or in our case LEDs, using real-time data, and to perform testing to verify the proper functioning of the system before creating the final working model of the system. So now we'll move on to my methodology plan. So this is an overview of the modules in my system. Basically, it comprises of two modules, the hardware module and the software module. So this hardware module is something that was newly added this semester, according to the requirements mentioned by Mr. Anwar. So it contains a Raspberry Pi, a camera, and LED modules, which would emulate truck lights. And the software module comprises a machine learning algorithm and a counting algorithm. So our, this semester, this FYP2, I have implemented, um, or I plan to implement this project using the Raspberry Pi 3, which was chosen in this case because it comes preloaded with Python, so it already has direct support for OpenCV installation. It uses a 1.2 gigahertz quad-core ARM Cortex processor. It has onboard Wi-Fi capabilities and onboard CSI connector, which I can use for my camera connection. And it's got multiple GPIO or like input-output pin support. So it was useful towards the implementation of my project where I need a camera and I need multiple pin support for my LEDs. So this is the circuit diagram that I um, came up with after the literature reviews that were carried out this uh, semester for FYP2. So as you can see, it's, it contains the Raspberry Pi being connected with the LED modules and the camera. So the requirements, as I mentioned, the hardware requirements, and the software requirements would be Python, the related libraries, TensorFlow, Keras, Image AI, and so on and so forth. So this gives you a clear idea of why I would need to use Raspberry Pi since it's pretty uh, well known, popular in the case of OpenCV and in the use of OpenCV. Yeah, so this slide basically details my methodology. So as you can see, it basically takes an image input. basically takes an image input, processes it. Sorry, one moment, I'm having a few technical issues. Yep, 
So it takes an image input, it processes it, and feeds them to the machine learning model, and this is all within the Raspberry Pi. If an ambulance is detected, it will clear out the track accordingly or it will change the LEDs accordingly. And if an ambulance is not detected, it works based on the number of cars in each lane. So based on the lanes that are more densely populated, it'll keep the green light on for longer. And if the lane is not very densely populated, it will turn the red light on and so on and so forth. And this information is what controls the LEDs, which emulate a traffic light in my situation. That is the general overall flow of the system. So that was my methodology for implementation. And now I will explain the implementation plan. So here is the GAN chart, which basically represents the schedule that I will follow for the duration of this project throughout FYP2. So, so far we're three weeks in. Um, from the start of the semester until now, what I have done is I have reviewed various literature. I've redefined the system design as we saw earlier to include a hardware component because previously this was entirely software based. Um, I've, I've identified the components that need to be used and I've already checked their availability on like online stores like Lazada and Shopee and <laughs> I've added it to the cart already. Then I furthermore installed my system. I've dual booted it with Linux so that I can begin um, development of my code. And since the Raspberry Pi is uh, Linux based, it's going to be more compatible when I need to move it in when the Raspberry Pi arrives. And furthermore, I researched into the various OpenCV codes for object detection. So that is what has been done so far. And continuing on, today is my progress presentation month, 7th of April. And from by the end of this week or next week, I will purchase or obtain my confidence. And if you factor in shipping time, it will show up latest by the 26th, like according to the cart on Lazada. Um, then, so meanwhile, I will be working on my code. As I mentioned, I already set up my system with Linux, so there shouldn't be too much of a compatibility issue. Yeah, and you know, I assumed it would be better to do this pre preliminary code work on a Linux-based uh, distribution. So when my hardware comes in, I will begin with my integration with the hardware. So I estimate that the code development will take up to mid-May from when I would start integrating with hardware and the progress presentation too would be in the 19th. Then after this I plan to move on to testing by, by around June and I plan to have all the final fixes and the final testing be done by the end of June so that I'm ready on time for my final presentation which would be on the 5th of July. So I have one week before to prepare for that, followed by the poster and video submission, which would be on the 7th of July. And then after that, I have the entire month for me to work on my thesis, which I will make sure is submitted by the 1st of August. That is my plan or plan of action for my FYP2. So here's the component list. Basically, it just includes the LED modules, the Raspberry Pis, the camera, and the the entire thing comes up to 180 according to the prices on Lazada. So my expected results for the system are one, object detection. It should be able to detect vehicles and ambulances from an input feed. Two, traffic control. It should be able to control the traffic lights or the traffic LEDs based on the situation. And three, performance. It should improve the system performance with efficiency improve system performance and efficiency with usage. Thank you for your time and attention. That was my FYP2 progress report. Okay, thank you, Joanna. All right, so good job. Okay, so far I satisfied your works for your plan. So my job is now to check your objective.
Okay. See, this is your objectives. All right. So I think uh, <clears throat> my comment are the same with John comments to identify uh, the requirements and techniques. Okay. To develop a smart traffic light system, but I think uh, better you remove or to identify the requirements and techniques because uh, now you are more to investigating. Okay, investigate the smart traffic light system. So I think the, the word can be changed here is to investigate. Okay. okay, to investigate or to study a smart traffic light system because you want to start your project before this. You already done your literature review, right? So that's mean you uh, understand better. Okay. Now you already done the investigation is already done. So for this FIP2, you are trying to implement or you are trying to make a hardware okay, for the system or you just to modify something a little bit with the Raspberry Pi okay, based on your story previously. All right. So next number two to design and develop. So what I mentioned to John previously. So if you want to focus on or if you want to add, okay, you want to story about the theoretical part, you should say to design. Okay, if you want to model, you just say so you can use uh, you can create a hardware only starting to starting from the implementation. But from your what hardware and software, I saw a lot of the okay. Uh, I saw in your software software list. Okay, I saw yeah, there is a lot of software you use. Okay, okay. Later I will talk about that. Right now I want to complete this uh, objective. So for this part, please select the suitable word to design or to model. Okay, you, or to model you can see that to model an object detection system to identify. I think it's too long. Okay, to identify the number of vehicle and the presence of ambulance from an image input. Maybe you can say to model. Okay, to model. Okay, to model an object detection system. Okay, to model uh, detection system to. Uh, an object detection system. Uh, what to what? To identify no system, uh, system. Uh, maybe you can say uh, to model and object detection system, which okay, which is the present of an input from an image input, maybe okay or something like that, okay. All right. Next, okay, to design and develop. Uh, okay, I think still not right. The sentence, I, I understand your point, okay, but I think you need to make it more, you need to rewrite again, revise again your sentence. Your sentence is not very clear. To design and develop, also same, you need to remove that. Maybe you can say that uh, previously you want to model an object, okay, maybe this one you want to, okay, maybe you can say you want to, a traffic light control system to control the traffic light. <clears throat> Maybe you can say you want can uh, to model a traffic light control system because you are implement the hardware. Okay, and to perform testing. Okay, to perform testing is wrong. Okay, you can say that to verify, to verify the system before creating the final working model of the system. Okay, no need to put the proper functioning now. Proper functioning is not the scientific work. Okay, clear, Joanna. Yes, right. sir. Okay, next is your hardware implementation. Okay, alright, this one is okay. Yeah. Okay, this one is eh, software, Python version three point eight. PyCam, IDE, OpenCV, Numpy, okay, SignPy, TensorFlow, Keras, Image AI. So you you are using all the software, Joanna? Uh, they're essentially libraries, so um, mostly I will just be dealing with Python as a language, and these right. are like supplementary libraries that I'll be using. Okay. So uh, it's okay, but just I want to to know your justification 
why why you need the tensor flow tensor flow is for what uh because my project deals with like open cv and machine learning so for the object detection module that's uh, necessary so this means using the tensor flow you can study the object detection is it correct yes sir oh are you sure Yes, sir. It's uh, it's essentially um, essential in the object detection model, especially like from what I've seen for like the algorithms that I'll be using and stuff. Mm. I've seen that TensorFlow was something that was necessary. Okay, all right, I understand. Okay, never mind. Uh, I think your your project will be more interesting later on. Okay, because you are studying a lot of software. So I'm very interested to know what is your output later on. Okay, but it's okay. Good job. Thank you, Jonah. So now we move on to. You, All right. Okay, Rajiv. All present lecturers and my fellow presenters. My name is Rajiv Suresh Nair, and today I'll be presenting my plan to FIP E2. And progress I've made for the project titled Design and Implementation of a Multi-Parameter Patient Monitoring System Using IoT. To start this presentation, I'd like to go over a brief outline of what I'll be presenting. To start the presentation, I'd like to go through a brief introduction of the various components of the project, followed by the Gantt chart that I've proposed in FIP1. I'll also go be going through the current plans I have for this semester in FIP2 as well as the progress I've made so far in this endeavor. This project, a patient monitoring system, consists of three basic components. The first, the monitoring system itself, which consists of hardware involving the microcontroller, the Wi-Fi module, as well as the various sensors attached to it. These sensors transmit the data via the microcontroller to the web server which hosts the detection algorithm as well as the communication interface. This communication interface is a software created using Flask, a Python-based microframework that is hosted on the web server and allows the patient and doctor to communicate with each other as well as to access prior records for vital sign reading information. The monitoring system comprises of the following. A microcontroller, which is in this case an Arduino Uno. A Wi-Fi module, which is the Node MCU ESP8266, as well as six different biotelemetry sensors, including uh, heart rate sensors, stress sensors, and uh, blood oxygen sensors. These work in tandem to provide a complete outline of the way of the patient's uh, current health condition as well as uh, whether the patient would require any form of assistance. This monitoring system is a one-way communication system which only transmits data and cannot receive or act on any instructions sent to it. Uh, the microcontroller chosen in this case was so due to its low price and ease of use as well as the other sensors were chosen because of their compatibility with the microcontroller as well as due to their uh, low cost. The web server chosen for this project is called Heroku and has been chosen to host the two following programs. A detection algorithm to alert the healthcare providers for if a patient needs assistance as well as a communication interface to uh, provide inter uh, communication between the pro healthcare providers and the patient. This server was chosen due to its support for multiple programming languages, including Python and uh, HTML, as well as due to its free cost of nature and ease of use. The communication interface mentioned earlier in this presentation is a Python based micro framework called Flask. This interface is responsible for allowing communication between the healthcare providers and patients, as well as to view the prior records of vital sign readings from the monitoring system. It's created using Flask, 
due to its ease of use and support for machine learning algorithms and Jinja templating. It is also an open source uh, software. Uh, as you can see, this is the Gantt chart for FIP2, which I had presented in my FIP1 thesis. Uh, this goes through all the activities that I'll be performing in order to achieve a final version for this project by the end of the semester in order to present a, a successful prototype. Uh, I'll go through these in the next slide where I'll go through my actual plans for each step of creating this project. The first step in completing this project involves compiling all the required hardware and uh, this means purchasing them from sellers, sorting these components together as well as testing the readings from these sensors in order to avoid uh, false measurements. After making sure the hardware side is working comp fine, I'll go through the software components, which starts off with a detection algorithm, which I think will take the most time. This detection algorithm is based using a support vector, vector machine, machine learning algorithm, which I will use to uh, classify the readings as desirable or undesirable based on the training I'll be based on the training it will be undergoing. Um, next, I will once I've trained the algorithm, I'll go through the testing phase for this al detection algorithm with readings from the sen actual readings from the sensors to check for its viability. Next, I'll be creating the communication interface using Flask in order to provide the communication between the healthcare providers and the patients. Uh, I'll also be creating or implementing a, a pre-existing video conferencing feature into this interface in order to allow for uh, real life, real time checkups between the, for the doctors and patients. And I'll also be creating a feature for storing and retrieving the vital sign information or biotelemetry in order to view the previous records for each patient. Following these steps, I'll be creating my first prototypes with and with all the features working. And after going through these prototypes and sharpening them down to what I really want, I'll be ready for my final presentation at the end of the semester. Currently, the progress I've made in this project uh, involves uh, placing orders for all the hardware. So this involves purchasing, uh, this involves buying the microcontroller, the Wi-Fi module uh, and the sensors. Out of these, I already have the Wi-Fi module and the microcontroller, which is the Arduino and the Node MCU. And I'm currently sourcing for the sensors at the lowest possible price I can on e-commerce websites like Lazada and Shopee. I'm also concurrently learning how to use Flask, which is based on Python, which I have experience with, but I have never used in a big project like this. And I'm also learning more about how I can train my detection algorithm in order to provide a more narrower and more accurate classification of the readings. Um, that's all for my progress and my plans for this FIP2 project and thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you Rajiv. All right, Rajiv, I have a few questions for you. Okay. Uh, can you get back to your objective? I cannot hear you, they are so noisy. Where are you now? Oh, yeah. We cannot hear you, very noisy. 
Okay. Everything is okay there. We cannot hear you. Because so noisy. Hello? Why what happened there? There is so noisy. Is it from your hardware devices? Or maybe you are in the club? What happened? I don't know. Okay, you can see something. Yeah, okay. Alright, so this is your objective to design and develop to design and develop okay. to design and develop a remote control a remote parameter multi-parameter pressure monitoring system using Arduino and Uno. Okay, as what I mentioned previously, if you want to design, you should say the story starting from the theoretical part. Okay, I believe that in your world, there is no design. There is no uh, starting from the theoretical you want that you have worked before. So I think you can remove the design. You can say that you want to model, okay, or you can say you want to implement a remote multi-parameter system. Okay. Are you follow me, Rajiv? Yes, sir. Okay. So next to design and develop a notification system that contacts hospital. All right. I believe that in this in this your in this your work, you are not uh, deal with the hospital. Okay. So uh, make I want to make it your work simple, okay? Maybe you can say that uh, you want to test, okay? You want to test or you want to verify your system, okay? With a small prototype, okay? With a small prototype in the maybe you can say you can use in the university, okay? In the university sick bay, or university uh, we don't have a clinic here, so you can use only the sick bay in MIU. Okay, to verify your works. All right, so this work, okay, this work for your information, we have done before, okay, we have done before to to create this uh, PMS system. And we do, we did this work in the sick bay of MIU. So I plan you can use the sick bay and you should have your, uh, I think you need to act, you need to act, okay, you need to act uh, or you can ask your friend to help you to do the, what we call demonstration, okay? A demonstration, all right? So maybe uh, during that time, you can show a video or something like that to show that your design, sorry, your your hardware is working, okay? So uh, I think please remove this objective number two. You can say that to verify the uh, PMS hardware devices or you can say to verify the prototypes, okay? in the sick bay of MIU, okay? Next, uh, to design and develop interface to allow communication between doctors and patients. To design and develop an interface. All right, for this part, uh, it's not very clear, okay? It's not very clear. Maybe you can exaggerate more, okay? And based on you, what you have presented previously, I saw that you are focusing... Oh, yeah? yeah. What? What? Sorry. Okay, oh. never mind. All right. Uh, okay, I share my screen right now. Okay, I share my screen.
Okay, and this is your plan. Okay. All right, for this one, web server Heroku, I hope you can do that. And communication interface. This one, this one, you you want to implement this communication interface or what? So the communication interface is meant for patients to communicate with their doctors for performing checkups from when they're at home. The system is meant to be implemented at home so that they don't have to travel outside. It's not meant to be implemented in a sector. Okay, never mind. All right. I think what you can do here, uh, you can say that you want to study the communication interface or you can say you want to investigate okay, the communication interface. Maybe you can write a, what we call a flow, flow diagram or any image diagram okay, to, to state or to mention to the examiner or to mention to the viewers that you are using this communication interface because uh, some of the examiner over sorry because of some of the evaluators or viewers from outside maybe they are less uh, less information okay regarding to this plus okay communication interface so please make it more clear okay what you want to make using this communication interface maybe you can show some figures okay to make it clear All right Okay. All right. Next, uh, plan for FIP2 compiling required hardware. All right. I believe that uh, you can plan properly how to purchase your hardware, everything, and make sure. Please uh, do not delay your work. Okay. Please do not delay your work because the time goes very fast right now, and please start to initiate. Okay, something for your works. I already have the microphone and the Wi-Fi module. I'm just waiting on the sensors. Yeah, exactly. I know that. But please uh, make your purchase first. Right? <coughs> so next, uh, for the coding support vector machine. Um, all right, I think this one is based on your work. Yeah. Okay. I think this one I already commented. Uh, next. Please order for hardware. Okay. Good. Learning to use plus. All right. So how 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 much time you need to to learn this use plus? Is it one week or two weeks? What is your plan? Probably by midway. I was planning to implement it after I get my. Hardware together, so the microcontrollers and everything. Once I check, they work. It's like starting to implement, uh, starting to develop the app for using class. So I was thinking I'll study until then. Now we use it. Okay. All right. Learning more about training SBM algorithm. Okay, this one same lah. Same issue with the class. Okay, never mind. All right. Hmm. Okay, that's all. Okay, good. All right, so that's all for Rajiv presentation. So now we move on to next presentation from Rushika. Are you Rushika? Are you there? Miss Rushika. Miss Rushika is in this. No. Okay. He, she is not here. We have Sivaranjini and Sahara. Okay, never mind. I think we can skip Rushika. Okay, we move on to Sahara. Sahara, are you ready? Uh, yes, sir. All the present lecturers and my fellow presenters. My name is Sahara Sprasta, and today I'm going to present about my progress and plans for FIP2 for this semester. The title of my project is Design and Development of Time Scheduler for University Students that Utilizes AI and NLP. 
first, I will go through the outline for this uh, presentation, which starts with um, giving a brief introduction to my project, uh, like about um, the sub uh, components of the of the application. Second, I'll be uh, presenting the Gantt chart for FIP2 that I um, presented during my FIP1. I'll also uh, extend it furthermore in uh, my current plans for FIP2. And then I will uh, talk about my current progress um, for this project. Uh, the project, which is named Stop Planning, Start Doing Task Scheduler, consists of a time scheduler that uh, helps students in scheduling their tasks. This uh, time scheduler uses prioritization algorithm and time allotment algorithm in, in order to prior, prioritize the um, tasks and also allot uh, required time for each task for the users. Uh, then it consists of an Android application that will be used in order to run the software. Uh, this application will be designed uh, or created using PV, which is a multi-platform uh, Python um, GUI library. Um, which uh, helps in uh, easy development of uh, mobile application. Then it uh, consists of a web server where uh, it will be used in order to save a user's information, which uh, includes their uh, personal information as well as um, information about uh, their classes and uh, also the doc documents that they upload. For the web server, I'm using Heroku web server, which is a free service uh, web server. It is easy to use as well. That's why I'm uh, using the server. Uh, next, I'll be talking about the time scheduler. Uh, uh, it The time scheduler uh, calculates the priority of the given task um, by the user. Uh, the Priority of the given task is calculated uh, based on three criteria, which is uh, first one is time remaining until deadline, which will be in hours, credits for the subject, which will be in whole numbers, and uh, weightage for each task, which will be in percentage. Another task for another feature of the time schedule is it calculates the time allotted per day for each task, uh, which will be based on or decided upon the priority of the tasks. Um, that will be calculated using the algorithm and also number of uh, concurrent tasks that is uh, that uh, that is um, allocated in a day. Uh, next is the uh, Android application. Um, this Android application will be um, created using a multi-platform Python GUI library, which is Kiwi, and it also allows for uh, creation of multi-platform application. Um, I'm using this application because it is uh, compatible with uh, multiple AI functionalities. Um, uh, the application also requires a web server in order to store users' uh, data. Uh, for this, I'm using Heroku web server, and uh, this server has been uh, this web server has been chosen because uh, it supports uh, Python scripts. Uh, it is a free service, and it is also easy to use. This is the Gantt chart for my FIP2, uh, which starts off, uh, well, which starts off with interface designing. Uh, it also involves uh, coding and uh, testing will go in hand in hand with uh, coding. Um, then I'll be designing prototype one and then prototype two, and then also after that uh, I'll be creating the final prototype of my uh, application. Then I'll also be uh, focusing on creating a final report for my FIP and also documenting all the uh, uh, all my progress and uh, tasks that I have uh, done during uh, the development of my project. Now I explain the Gantt chart in more detail, uh, which is the my actual plans for FIP in actual plans of, for FIP two. So um, the Creation of my application starts with uh, creating a base Android application. Uh, for this, I've been learning how to use Kiwi. Uh, I have, I, have, I also have been creating an attractive and user-friendly uh, user interface and experience. Um, later, I will uh, uh, create a um, uh, provide. Cre I'll create a pro profile creation feature for the users. Then I will also create a feature 
can upload their documents for the test assignments um, or any other required documents in order to schedule their tasks and also get uh, the reference materials. Um, next, uh, I will uh, implement uh, the algorithms, which is um, the prioritization algorithm and time alerting algorithm. After um, I have uh, implemented uh, the algorithms, I'll be testing those algorithms to check if it works or not, and I'll be doing that using some dummy data. Uh, then I'll move on to the development of the AI features for my application, uh, which involves uh, implementing OCI functionalities. This functionality will be used in order to read characters or text, text from the documents uploaded by the users, uh, which will be helping uh, um, the task scheduler to schedule the task as well as get reference materials for the users. Uh, then this uh, another AI feature is um, uh, reference um, material retrieval. So next I'll be developing uh, that feature uh, using uh, NLP. Now I'll be uh, talking about my current progress uh, for FYP2. Um, uh, for uh, till now, I have been learning how to use uh, Kiwi. I have also derived required equations for task prioritization, and uh, I have also set up a web server uh, and checked if it's um, working or not by uploading a few uh, data as well as documents in it. Um, so that's all for my progress and uh, plan for FIP2 for this semester. Thank you. All right, thank you, Sahara. OK, Sahara, can you show me your objective, please? To identify factors that affect academic performance to design. OK, uh, all right, for your, since you are a BCS student, so I'm not sure whether this to design and develop is correct or not. OK, if you OK, based on my understanding okay, to design, that means you what I I discussing before. OK, so to design, maybe you need to find the theoretical part okay, based on what is the the what the study previously people have done. OK, maybe you need to find the one of the subject. So you need to find the theoretical part, the equation, the governed equation, right? So maybe you need to find the okay, the coding okay, of your algorithm. Okay. So um, to make it uh, standardized with BCE student, so maybe you need to revise again okay, your objective. Okay. Just just change the structure of your writing. This. Okay. Please uh, make it uh, clear okay, to design and develop. Maybe you can say to to develop only a task scheduling application based on AI. Are you so I wrote design because I'm uh, forming my own algorithms in order to schedule the task. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Oh, so that's why you are not designing, correct? No, no. So I'm uh, designing because uh, the algorithms I came up. Uh, by myself, it's not from any previous works. Oh, okay. All right, so, good. So that's me. You are designing, lah. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So maybe you can make it simple. Just put to design a task scheduling application based on AI. Simple. To design, okay. Because uh, if you were saying develop, develop means that uh, it's not enough for FIP. Okay, FIP is not uh, it's not the area for you to. It's very noisy. I need to. Okay, sorry. I need to mute you. All right. So it's so noisy. <laughs> sorry for that. All right. So that means uh, you are designing. Your work is designing the application. Okay. So maybe this is your novelty work. I hope so. And maybe the last one is to perform surveys to instead the useful of the apps. To perform survey, to perform survey. 
So that's mean after you have created your uh, application, so you use your application to perform the survey. Is it correct or not? Uh, yes, sir. I'm planning to perform a survey after I'm done developing it. Okay, maybe you can say to perform the survey using the uh, what? Using the created developed application. application. Yes, develop application. Okay, based on this, based on AI. Right, maybe because I, I don't like you. Okay, listen, student. Okay, I don't like all of you to put some of the, uh, what you say? Some of the words which is uh, not very scientific, such as usefulness. Okay, usefulness is not the scientific word. Okay, and also some, some, sometimes people are not very, what, motivate to, to read the article using the, using this word. Okay, usefulness. Usefulness is not a scientific word. Maybe you can find more scientific word. Okay, how to find the more scientific word? You need to read a lot of article. Okay. So this is one of the method how to to improve your writing skill, right? I, I understand your point, but maybe we can try to improve our writing skill. That's all. So uh, are you clear, uh, Sarah? Is it okay? Uh, yes, sir. All right. I think, uh, okay, good job for Sarah Works. And please revise only the objective. Okay. Next, we, we move on to... Uh, Sibaranjini. Okay, Sibaranjini. Okay, Sibaranjini, are you ready? Ah, uh, yes, sir. And uh, as you all know, my project name is Design and Modeling a Smart Wearable Pet Tracker that associated with a GPS and uh, as for my progress, what I did was last time when I present, I got advised by my examiner and my supervisor, uh, like a tool to change my objective because like the objective objectives seems not so suitable for my project. So I changed my three objectives and then uh, I changed the scope of the study a bit because like uh, uh, this one seems more suitable for my project. And then for the literature review, uh, I added some newly uh, researched uh, topics into my uh, literature review part. And then for the methodology part, uh, as I edited my uh, agile methodology of each of the phases under my STLC, the mm, STLC because like as I'm now working on my project, I got to know what I'm doing for each of the phases and that makes me like to write about it briefly under this. And then uh, I didn't change any of my diagram because like uh, I I was told that this diagram was suitable for my project and then uh, I changed my hardware parts because like uh, I had to do my uh, GPS circuit by my own. So uh, to do the circuit, I, I needed this things which is which is uh, Arduino Uno Nano and then the Neo 06 module, then ESP8266 breadboard and some jumping wires. And I did uh, updated the budget for my project. And then I used the Fritzing app to design and model my circuit, which will, that will be easier for me to do the circuit in real. And, and then uh, that's all I've done for my pro, uh, report. Uh, yes, uh, and I also did changed my 
a 5p to a uh, gun chart because like uh, the, the time was a bit changing so I edited it a bit and then uh, I used freezing app to do this design for my circuit. This design involves uh, uh, this Arduino, Nano and breadboards, jumping wire, ESP8266 things. And I, yes, uh, did this, um, modeled it in the freezing. And uh, now I bought all these things and now I'm working on doing the real circuit because like uh, after uh, I did my real circuit, it will easier for me to uh, connect it with my the app I'm coding now. Like I will code later and after uh, this will take a uh, two weeks time for me to do the circuit. So after doing the circuit, I will be doing my app coding and I think that's all what I've uh, the progress I did till now, sir, and thank you, sir. All right, Sivaranjini. Okay, I have so many things to comment your works, all right? But uh, let's start with your objective. Okay, objective. Okay, to design a communication architecture. All right, I think uh, if you understand your word, is good. If you're not clear, please you can check with your supervisor later on, okay? Because you want to design a communication architecture for the tracker sensor and mobile apps. So this means uh, I'm not sure whether you want to design or you want to implement or you want to to model, okay? To design what I'm saying many times, okay? You need to find the theoretical part in your system, okay? For example, like uh, Sahara works previously, right? She did the she did the coding by herself, and she designed the application. But for your work, is it you want to do the design method, or you want to create a model, or implement a hardware, something like that? Or maybe you will have a little bit of the uh, coding application, okay? But I'm not sure. All right, so you need to double check again. And if you want to plan to design, please do so. If you want to model, okay, maybe it's a little bit easy for your work. Easy for your work, maybe you just uh, implement for the hardware and also you can create your model directly. No need to discuss for the theoretical part. There is no uh, simulation okay, using the software. Okay, for example, if you are using the Arduino or Raspberry Pi, there is a software you can try to simulate. Use. The name of the software is Pro Proteus. Okay, Proteus, P-R-O-T-E-U-S. So if you want to design your system, you can use the Proteus software. But I think uh, this is your FIP2. This is too early right now, right? Too early. This is your... Uh, early of the semester, so I think you, you still have much time to explore the Proteus, but it depends on your interest. If you you don't want to make it, or you want if you don't want to design your work, it's okay. If you plan you want to design, you can check the software. All right, P R O T E U S Proteus. If you want to check or you want to know a uh, little bit of of this software, you can check with me later. Right, to create a mobile application and GPS tracker, to create, uh, I think to create, this means uh, you just want to create. There is no knowledge behind to create. So you can check, uh, change the create. Maybe you can, maybe you can put uh, to investigate. Okay, or maybe you can put uh, to implement. Okay, to implement. Implement means you want one you want to do something, but at the same way you are trying to study to implement. To create for me is uh, you just want to create okay without any knowledge behind. And next, uh, analyzing the existing feature. Okay, this is the wrong writing of your objective. In order to write an objective, you should put two in front of your word. 
to analyze the existing feature of the pet tracking to see if they are suitable for Malaysian pet owners. To analyze the existing feature, maybe you can say to compare. Okay, because you are in FIP too, so maybe you should study. Okay, to analyze means you want to analyze for a single study, right? There is no comparison. Maybe you can put more to compare the existing feature of the pet tracking. If they are suitable for Malaysian pet owner, what do you mean if they are suitable for Malaysian pet owner? Siwa Ranjini. Yes, sir. Uh, what I mean was like, uh, if the pet owners in the Malaysia will be using it or not, like it, the app will be suitable for them to use or not. Like that so that's mean, that's mean you are creating a application and you ask the user to, to do the survey. Is it like that? Uh, yes, sir. after I create the app, I'll do the survey. So who is your market? I mean, uh, who is your tester? Is it is it you want to check all of the world or you want to check on only this MIU? Maybe your friend or something like that? Or maybe your relative? Uh, uh, maybe my friends and some people I know in this MIU circle. Yeah, maybe you should zoom in, okay? Maybe you can put it not in formulation. <laughs> First of all, for maybe in MIU pet owners. Okay, MIU pay owners okay. should be very small gap, small, small area for your study. If you put formulation pet owners, I think, uh, okay, something wrong lah, okay. It's okay, but it's maybe make you difficult, okay, to, to do the evaluation later, right? So make it simple, make it simple your work. You can put for MIU, multiple uh, pet owners, okay? Or maybe you can put for... For, for your relative or friends, pet owners, something like that. Okay. To make it more commercial, I think you can put uh, MIU lah. Okay. Not Malaysian. All right. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, next. Okay, uh, previously you show me the, all right, this software, Lion Freezing, what? Ah, oh, Freezing. Okay, this software is a uh, free, freeware or you need to buy or we need to have a license or what? Sibaran Jini? Is it we need to purchase the software or you can use the trial version? I'm using the trial version, sir. Oh, the trial version. Yes. Okay. Sir. Uh, okay, I'm not familiar with the freezing, okay? But I think it's the same uh, software with the Proteus. Okay, Proteus, if you want to use the Proteus, it's very good because uh, we can borrow the license from the other university, okay? But I have one friend, okay, my friend from UTHM. So he simulated using the Proteus. So if you are interested to learn the Proteus, you can change your, uh, it's okay. You can just use, use this one to simulate. Okay, if you plan to simulate your, what your Arduino and Raspberry Pi. I think there is no Raspberry Pi here, only the Arduino, okay. But just my just just my advice. If you are interested, you can check with me later. If you don't want to use, if you want to fix to use this uh, freezing, up to you lah. Okay, just to make it you. I uh, mean, in order we want to run the research. Okay, guys, if you want to run a research, we should have a good resources. Okay, a good resources mean that we should have a good. If you want to do the simulation part, okay, you should know who is your Okay, let's say in MIU there is no software like this and we don't, MIU don't provide this software and we don't have a license. So if we use this software, okay, in, and put in our report, 
you can this is what we call the academic criminal okay <laughs> academic criminal for your information because we don't have a license but we use the private maybe we just use a trial version trial version is okay but if you not mentioned in the, your reports so that means it's wrong okay it's a criminal in the academics academic so what I advise to you, we have another software, Proteus, so we can use the software from other university, okay? Other university, but we need to mention his name, he's uh, the owner of the software, and then we can use the correct version, correct version, okay? Correct version, so we can, we can install the correct version to create your, what we call this one, the simulation, okay? Just for your information, lah. If you if you don't want to follow my advice, should be no problem. Okay, just in case, just in case if you want to further your study later on, right? So after you want to complete the master or PhD, so you should know the method how to to get the resources. Understand? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Uh, this one is okay. Oops. The text from the oh, sorry. document. And uh, see. Is the winner? Okay, uh, I think it's okay lah for Sivarajini. No comment from me, but. I think we need to work together, okay, uh, Sivaranjini, because I think there is something wrong with your projects. So let me check one by one with you later on. Okay, uh, all right. I think uh, that's all for the presentation session for your research proposal. Uh, sorry, for your research progress. But I think we have one more student left. I think Rushika. I tried to contact her, but there is no, okay. He, she is replying my WhatsApp. So, oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's, I think uh, she's in the, not very clear about the FYP. Okay, I think she is something like a person in the, <laughs> in the other world. Okay, never mind. I think uh, I will settle one by one with Rushika. Okay, I think that's all for today. All right, that's all for today. And thank you very much for your joining this uh, presentation. And for your information, we will have our second presentation. Okay, the second presentation will be on 20, sorry, this one. Okay, it's 19 of May. So we will have another one month and a half. Okay, so my expectation for this progress presentation, you should complete around 50 to 60%. Okay, so 60, 50 to 60%. So we hope that you already have your devices and everything is okay. If you have problem with your FIP2, I mean, so during this uh, progress presentation number two, so uh, maybe we can discuss what is the best solution for you. Right, so maybe this during this uh, program presentation, I will invite two examiners. Um, I think one examiner is okay, lah. Okay, one, uh, I think one or two, lah. Okay, same, lah, two, two examiners, okay, to evaluate your progress presentation. Okay, the main thing of this uh, program presentation, okay, please remember, okay, because normally you will ask me many times, what is the point need to be in the program presentation? So, for example, okay, number one, you should put your 
objective. Research objective is one of the compulsory thing you need to follow from the from the starting until the end. Okay, if you have problem with your pro, for your objective, something wrong with your FIP. Because FIP, we want to evaluate and we want to educate all of the student to write or to create a scientific project. A scientific project. There is no uh, uh, what we call the project without any intention. Okay, just mean just you. If you like to do this project, okay, you can do it. No, we need to create a scientific and academic writing. Okay, for this FIP. So what I plan for this FIP two. All of you should have your what we call. Of, of course, you will have your thesis, and on, at the end of the semester, you will should provide your article. Okay, article means the IEEE. Okay, IEEE paper, a project paper in an IEEE. Okay, so many times I always uh, if, remind my students. Okay, all of you, FAP2 student, please uh, be serious, okay? Be serious for your project, okay? Because uh, previous, previously I... Okay. All right, sorry for the interruption. Okay. So, uh, are you following me? Is it okay? Clear or not? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, so, uh, okay, Roshika. I think uh, Roshika will be the last pre presenter for today. Uh, all right, so the rest, I think all of you, except, except Roshika, you can leave the meeting right now, and I will provide with Roshika one by one. Okay, I think that's all for the FIP2, and Roshika, please stay remain in this uh, presentation session. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I'll okay, send sir. the objectives, my initial objectives in the WhatsApp. Okay, I will check to you one by one. Okay, sir. Thank you. Hello, sir. Yeah, wait. Yes, okay, sir. Okay, Rushika. Uh, do you have any problem with the uh, announcement that I made in the WhatsApp group? Uh, yes, sir. The thing is, I did not check it because I was feeling a bit sick, so I had slept, sir. <laughs> okay, okay. For oh, your yes, uh, no problem. Okay, just to... Okay, this is my last warning to you. Okay. All right. So, uh, yes. for your information, okay, for your information, starting from this semester, we combine the progress presentation, between BCE and BCS, okay? We combine, yes, we, we, we combine together and all the BCE and BCS student will have a same a same uh, time presentation, okay? That's mean a single time, consists of two BC, uh, two program, BCE and BCS, because previously we make it, uh, we split the session, but for this semester, we try to combine, okay? Easy for... Oh. Okay, easy for us to to what to monitor or to control your progress. Okay, and then for your information also, and since uh, I'm not very satisfied with the writing skill of this uh, FIP student previously. Okay, that's why um, because uh, some of them are not very serious. Okay, uh, creating I mean uh, making their projects. Okay, making their project at the, I mean, we have the target. Okay, we have a target for this FIP. For this FIP, so we need to produce a student to how to write a scientific paper, number one, and how to write the uh, academic academic uh, writing, something like you need to create your, I mean, for your, what? For your report thesis, so you should write in a proper way. Because previously I saw there is so many error. Okay, there is there is so many problematics in the writing. So now I want to fix this fix this problem. So this one of the method. So we combine. We combine BCE and BCS. So are you clear now? Yes, sir. Understood, sir. All right, good. So uh, we move back to the presentation. 
Okay, so we will start your presentation right now. Okay. As uh, uh, the same thing that we I had like uploaded to YouTube, uh, I need to present it live, sir. No, no, no. I will play the video. Oh, okay, sir. I share the screen right now. You can see that. Uh, I, no, I, sir. So no? we'll, um, uh, uh, give me a minute. So I'll leave the meeting and enter it back again because I have this problem. Like I can't see. Oh, you cannot see. No, it's because it's because I'm my phone. So if I switch to laptop, then I usually get connected. Oh, so you want to change? I'll, or... I'll join in one minute. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. No problem. Hello, sir. Yeah. I'm here soon. Okay. Can we start now? Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. My final year project, which is an Android based expert system application associated with camera based math detection and solver for students in in my uh so and this presentation is to discuss the progress report of this fip and uh, in here we're going to discuss and elaborate on the methods taken and the process of developing this project i uh, here are the table of contents and this is the introduction our uh, mathematical problems are actually a cornerstone to every student's life like be it middle school or um, high school, college or beyond. And generally, one could utilize a, like a calculator or computer programs to solve equations. However, those pose certain limitations and also could be prone to human error. Therefore, in this project, uh, I would aim to develop an Android application that would solve um, mathematical problems by capturing the input via the device's cameras. Uh, this would utilize like handwritten mathematical expression recognition techniques, and uh, according to Hussein and others, in, it is one of the most complicated issues in the area of computer vision. And next, we shall discuss about the objectives of this project. Uh, firstly, the, the program should be able to capture an image via the device's camera, uh, and those images should pertain mathematical figures and functions that are specified within it. Uh, the, uh, the program should be able to analyze the pixels of the image and distinguish the mathematical problems specified within it and recognize it. Uh, next, upon recognition, Program should be able to process and uh, solve the mathematical problems in real time. 
and uh, the program should also be able to display the solution to the user or if uh, it could not detect or something had happened like it's not a valid uh, question or function it should display the according error, error message uh, next uh, we have all already like so far finished uh, most of the phases and we're uh, we're going forward with development uh, so yeah, to to develop this, there are certain prerequisites. It is a, mainly it's an Android application. Therefore, I have uh, decided to um, install Android Studio and continue working on this on Android Studio. And on Android Studio, uh, the programming language is said to be Java, so I will be coding it on Java. And next, I will start. Uh, I'll start working on coding the program. So yeah. Uh, Talking about how exactly I'm going to move forward to uh, program this. Uh, this. This is an entirely software program. There is no other, no external hardware or anything else that's required. So uh, let's talk about how exactly uh, I will be planning on uh, developing it. Uh, the SDLC cycle for development that I chose for this project is the iterative model. And then since it's not a relatively large project and it does not consist of large components either, as discussed in the following slides, uh, which I will show right now, uh, it's an uh, approximate estimation of the cycles required, each representing a certain component of the application, and that is how it will be developed, which we will see uh, later on uh, of the timeline in the Gantt chart as well. So yes. Uh, the first iteration would be the processing and detecting the math functions in the captured image. Uh, so during this iterative process, uh, I would I would be developing the optical character recognition component of the application. This would be considered the first iterative cycle, and up, upon coding and implementation of the OCR algorithm, it will be tested to see if it performs diligently. And during any phase within this cycle, the coder, which is me, would be able to go back in phases and accept changes into the design or the coding. Uh, so far, I uh, of my research, I have found out that the Tesseract OCR is actually um, a very uh, good and valid uh, OCR technique to implement. So I will be working on implementing the Tesseract to recog recognize uh, the mathematical problems within the image that's specified. The second iterative cycle and the second iterative cycle, I will be developing the CNN component to be implemented to perform the particular mathematical function that has been detected by the OCR component. And for this, I will be integrating MathPix API. Uh, and the next iterative cycle would be uh, displaying the solution to user or the according error message. In this cycle, we would ensure that the solutions derived after recognition and solving are appropriately dis, uh, sorry, appropriately displayed to the user. And if not, and in case of error or the program couldn't recognize something, an appropriate error message would be generated and displayed accordingly. And next, and the technically the last iterative cycle, but we will, but I will be you uh, I will be working on the user interface development. Uh, from uh, the from quite some time, not technically the last, and I will be comp uh, iteratively developing it in uh, uh, simultaneously as the previous cycles, and which I will explain in the Gantt chart. But yes, uh, the process of designing the user interface would be worked on simultaneously uh, to designing the components and all iterative cycles checked and integrated to uh, fit a full functioning application. This is the preliminary design for the application's interface. Uh, there is a this is the camera that would be able to uh, scan the problem, and and there is also an op option to enter the program manually. And here would be the result displayed. Next, is, we shall talk about testing. Uh, according to the iterative SDLC cycle, testing is something that happens during each single phase of the uh, the process. So during each iterative processes, those uh, individual components that have been developed will also be tested to completion. And uh, then after that integrated overall and also again tested. And 
here is the gun chart. I have um, grouped the timelines together within two weeks of each, giving each uh, thing like two weeks. Uh, so yeah, finalizing the initial research uh, would be would take from March 26th to April 4th. So from April 5th uh, onwards, I would I would start my preliminary coding and I would be working on the first iterative cycle. And then according to the gun chart, it would go on. As seen here, the user interface would be developed from this time towards the end. It will be tweaked and uh, updated and stuff. Iterations and corrections would also be going on throughout the cycle and testing the same. Report writing and finalizing everything would be uh, the final part, but it would be um, done throughout the cycle as well. And that is all from me. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, thank you, Rushika. So uh, my point here just to okay, just to correct your objectives. Okay, now you have four objectives. Okay. Now number one to be able to capture. I think to be able you can remove. Okay. Okay, sir. You can remove to be able and you can start with. Uh, what? To capture via the image carrier, we may pertaining to mathematical figure and functions and function specified visit. Sorry, sir. Oh, uh, hold on. Wait, eh? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Reverse camera images pertaining to mathematical figures and function. Okay, I think for number one, you remove to be able and you can start with to identify. It's just uh, what? Noted, sir. Okay, sir. What do you want to say? I think you can put uh, to identify okay, to, or to verify. To, to verify, I think to verify. To verify the device camera to verify the device camera which is can do the image pertaining to mathematical figures and functions specified within it okay to verify the device camera which is which can do the image pertaining uh, something like that uh. okay mm -hmm. yes, i repeat again to verify the device camera, which is can do the image pertaining to mathematical figures and function specified within it. Okay, and the next. Okay, next is to distinguish. 
the mathematical problem by analyzing the pixel of the image. Okay, next to process and solve. I think uh, this one you cannot, uh, no need to mention in your report. To process and solve the mathematical problem in the real time. I think when you already put, uh, when you already say about the to verify the device camera, which can do so, which is is already there. I mean, the your statement is already there. No need to mention two times. Okay. Yes, sir. To display the solution to the user, or display the coding error message. <laughs> to display the solution to the user. What do you mean to display the solution? Maybe, oh, okay, understand. So you are capturing the mathematical figure. Okay, so maybe you can say that uh, to display solution to the user. Okay, to display, no need to put to display. <laughs> display is not the scientific word. Okay, maybe you can put to, okay, to evaluate, uh, to evaluate the solution. According to the error message. Or you can say to evaluate or to what? To, to evaluate. Okay, to evaluate the solution according to the error message. That means you have your solution. That means we are you are trying to to study or to to what to make some to make some uh, investigation okay, to your solution. That means starting from the when you want to get the when you use your camera and then you go to the mathematical figures. So during that time, they will run. Okay, the system will run to, to think about that. Okay, what what is the solution? So after that, if there is an error, okay, there is an error, you will try to uh, troubleshoot the solution. Or you can say to evaluate or to troubleshoot the solution according to error message. Okay? Yes, yeah, I think uh, make it make it uh, your please revise your objective and please please uh, what follow what I'm saying just now. Uh, so I had already uh, you had given feedback during FYP once and I had already revised revised it and added this to make it more professional sounding. Yeah, but yeah, I take into note exactly what you said today. OK, All right. Very good. OK, that's all. Do you have any question uh, to ask? Any, uh, uh, right. No, sir. Uh, any other uh, feedback on the on the Gantt chart and like the iterative uh, cycles that I'm plan that I've mentioned in this presentation? Oh, you mentioned the Gantt chart. Huh? Okay. All right. This is the Gantt chart. Okay, starting from March twenty. Sorry, March to four April. Finalizing the initial research. Coding first iterative cycle. Yes, I had mentioned that iterative cycles each four of it before this. Okay, lah. All right, no problem. Okay, I think uh, so okay. far so good, <laughs> because uh, Ganchat is your plan. Okay, you you did to yes. follow your plan. Okay, so if you not follow your plan, that's mean you are not following your Ganchat. So that's mean your timing will be problem at the end of the project. So. I think I think so far is okay as long you know what you need to do for your project. No issues should be no problem. Okay, if you have any problem, yes, you can. Who is your supervisor? Uh, Mr. Shamim. Mr. Shamim. Okay. All right. Never mind. Uh, okay. I just want to ask you one question. Huh? Okay, when yes, you work, sir, sir. when you when you work with the supervisor, Mr. Shamim, right? 
Mr. Mr. Shamim, uh, what what he can service you? What he can help you? Uh, I feel like sir helped uh, with like uh, while I was researching and stuff, helped with the topics and like reviewing and stuff. And I, and I feel like so could also help with coding since I studied uh, under him like a couple of subjects and uh, he did help a lot during the lesson. So I feel like he would also be helpful during. During the coding part of this as well, sir. OK, good. Just just to know your justification It's OK. All right. I think that's all. And if you have any question, you can text to me. Lah. OK, oh, yeah, sure. Sir. Uh, yes, sir. sure, sir. OK, so thank you very much and bye bye. Thank you, sir.